Dolphins Today is sponsored by Mint Mobile. They have cell phone plans starting as low as $15 per month. We'll tell you more about them later on today's show. With that, we get into today's show. Dolphins fans, I am Will Scott. Welcome in to Dolphins Today. You know what, guys? Yesterday was Victory Monday, but I'm just going to call today Victory Tuesday because I'm still on cloud nine after that win over the Ravens on Sunday. And now we have the game of the century coming up this Sunday against the Buffalo Bills. Both teams 2-0 going into that one. And I'm trying to reach 30,000 subscribers before kickoff at Hard Rock Stadium, 1 o'clock Eastern time on Sunday. Go down, help us get there. Let's reach a milestone before that big game against the Bills. Hit that big red subscribe button if you're all about the Miami Dolphins, who are very, very good this year. And a lot of people singing to a tongue of Iloa's praises after that six-tutty game, but not Colin Coward. Here is what the host of The Herd said about Tua. Tua is going to start putting up big numbers, as we predicted all offseason. And you're going to get fooled and suddenly think he's great. What? <laughs> Congratulations for hitting a bunch of wide-open guys on broken coverage. He's still small, not very athletic, with an average deep arm. Folks, if you can't hit some of these throws in the NFL, these are layups. This is so predictable. They give him an offensive coach. They get him Tyreek Hill. He already had Jalen Waddle is in year two. They give him Sad Wilson. Both running backs look dynamic. They get an all-pro left tackle. His numbers go up, as we told you they would and everybody freaks out. This is such a weak take from Colin Coward, man. I mean, to say he only hit wide open receivers all game, first of all, he's got to get the ball to him. But second of all, he made tight coverage throws all game. Did you not watch the throw to Mike Kosicki in the back of the end zone? That couldn't have been pinpointed any better, and that got the Dolphins back in the game. Not athletic? Did you not see some of the plays he made, that spin move touchdown to River Craycraft? And then he's like, oh, well, now he's putting up good numbers because he finally has weapons. Are you really going to diss Tua because he finally has some help? He finally has help, and now look at the numbers he's putting up. He finally has a coach that supports him. He finally has some weapons. He finally has a better offensive line, and you're going to diss him for that? Get out of here with this take from Colin Coward. He is a clown. No surprise, another clown take from Colin Coward. Type clown, the clown emoji, down in the comment section. I want to see that spammed down in the comment section. Let's go defend our guy Tua against this very weak and pathetic take from Colin Cowherd on FS1. I mean, how on earth can you criticize a performance like this? It was one of the best performances that we're going to see in the NFL all year. He goes out, throws six touchdown passes. 469 yards, responded after the two interceptions in the first half, leads the Dolphins back from a 21-point halftime deficit, a 21-point deficit at the start of the fourth quarter as well. It was a remarkable performance from Tua, the game of his life, and I think it's what he needs to get his confidence even to get his confidence up going forward. But look at where Tua ranks in the NFL after the first two weeks of the season. First in passing yards, tied for first in touchdowns with seven, first in first downs with... 34, completion percentage still very high, north of 71%. That ranks sixth in the National Football League. And I know Colin Coward was dissing Tua, but other members of the media starting to acknowledge that Tua is a good quarterback. This coming from Stephen A. Smith. Good Lord have mercy. What a show Tua, Cheetah, and Waddle put on today. We might have to change all of our perspectives a bit on these Dolphins after this show. Damn. Skip Bayless saying, what an amazing comeback shootout win at Baltimore for Tyreek, Waddle, and Tua. Didn't think he had that in him, even with the NFL's fastest receiving duo. Amino Lacho, who has always been a very big Tua supporter, shout out to him, said this. Tua had six touchdowns, 469 passing yards. If Justin Herbert would have done that, if Patrick Mahomes would have done that, we wouldn't be disappointing the Ravens. We'd be like, man, it's Herbert, it's Mahomes. You can't stop them. Keep that same energy with Tua. Let's keep that same energy with Tua Tungavailoa. Joy Taylor, also of FS1, the sister of Dolphins legend Jason Taylor, tweeted this after the win. And when you say Miami, sing it, Seeps. You're talking Super Bowl because we're the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins. You love to see it. Shout out to Joy Taylor, big Dolphins fan. Colin Coward, not a Tua fan. 
There's other members of the media, though, like the ones we just discussed, that are starting to show respect to Miami. I'm going to get to more takes on this in a second because I have some. First, I want to tell you about our friends over at Mint Mobile because they're letting you use your data however you like, even where coffee shops don't exist. Your service will, sit, will switch seamlessly between 5G and 4G LT, whatever network is the strongest. I can't tell you a number of times when I used to have Verizon where I'm like not on the strongest possible connection. It's frustrating. Most importantly, they're offering you unlimited premium wireless plans starting as low as $15 per month. That's the link to get that deal, mintmobile.com slash chatsports. That link in the comments and description of this video. Here's kind of what I think about all this, because Tua is obviously a polarizing figure around the league, even though he shouldn't be. Shutting up the haters is not going to happen overnight. I think there's a lot of people that are starting to show respect to Tua that didn't before. Not Colin Coward, unfortunately, but shutting up the haters is not going to happen overnight. You know, yes, he had one remarkable game. It's a great two games to start the season for Tua. But if he remains consistent and does that again, let's say, against Buffalo, then you're going to start to shut up more haters. And if the Dolphins make a playoff run, then everyone's going to be quiet. Game of the century on Sunday. I want you all to go down in the comment section, type beat Buffalo down in the chat. They crushed Tennessee last night, a team that was number one in the AFC last year. Type beat Buffalo down in the comment section. Huge game, 1 o'clock Eastern time, Hard Rock Stadium. We're going to be live for a watch party here on Dolphins today. You don't want to miss that. If you, if you guys thought I was intense the first two weeks of the season, just wait until this watch party on Sunday. Want to get into this news because the Dolphins have brought in four tight ends for a workout. This comes after Hunter Long and Ethan Carter missed Sunday's game against Baltimore. Here's what Aaron Wilson reported. And Wilson's all over the waiver wire and all over these workouts. So he was the first to report it. Dolphins worked out tight ends. Daryl Daniels, Ryan Izzo, James O'Shaughnessy, and Dion Yelder. So four tight ends that the Dolphins brought in for a workout yesterday. Let's talk about each of them. Daryl Daniels has 61 career games played with the Cardinals, the Seahawks, and the Colts. Ryan Izzo, he was waived by the Panthers in August. He spent time with the Titans, Seahawks, Giants, and Texans. They also brought in Dion Yelder, released by the Cardinals in August as a part of their roster cuts. 31 career games played with the Bucks and the Chiefs. But the most notable name by far that they brought in yesterday James O'Shaughnessy, who played two seasons with the Chiefs before spending five seasons with the Jaguars, was a huge weapon for Blake Bortles on that AFC championship uh, team, the team that played in the AFC championship game. 112 career receptions, over 1,100 yards. He did sign with Chicago this offseason. However, he was released by the Bears at the 53-man roster deadline. So when I saw that name on Aaron Wilson's tweet, I'm like, man, that'd be a pretty big signing for the Dolphins if they brought this guy in. So if the Dolphins do sign a tight end, who do you want it to be? Pick a name. Daryl Daniels, Dion Yelder, Ryan Izzo, James O'Shaughnessy. Let me know down in the comments section what tight end do you want the Dolphins to bring in if they sign a tight end? For me, I'm typing James O'Shaughnessy. I feel like he's still a decent player. So taking a look here at the Dolphins' tight end situation because they already have a lot of tight ends on this team. They got five tight ends. I was a little bit surprised that they carry five tight ends. A lot of teams just carry three or four. But Seathan Carter and Hunter Long did not play on uh, Sunday. Seathan Carter had the concussion. Hunter Long, I believe, is day-to-day. -day, so... We'll see what goes down. I think this is more of a precautionary thing that they might sign one of these guys to the practice squad and then elevate them to the active roster if Long or Carter are, un are unable to go on Sunday against the Bills, which is why I would say hold off on signing a tight end right now. You already have a very crowded tight end room. I'd much rather have six wide receivers than five tight ends. I do want to keep uh, Tanner Connor, though, obviously, but Seathan Carter is a guy that I look at and I don't know his value on this team if it's worth keeping him over the roster, let's say over River Craycraft, because Craycraft has already been elevated two times from the practice squad. He can only be elevated one more time. Apparently, according to Barry Jackson, they might be interested in signing him to the 53, but we'll see. But until we know more about Hunter Long's status, about Seathan Carter's status, hold off on signing a tight end. But if they're out on Sunday, if, if Hunter Long's injury is more significant than we think, then maybe bring a guy like James O'Shaughnessy 
to Miami. Just a reminder that we're live every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern time. We're going to be previewing the Buffalo Bills game on Sunday. Also going to have a Q&A. Anyone that joins us for the live show, shout out to Ivan, by the way. You know who you are, Ivan. We have a lot of fun during those live shows. Be sure to join us every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern time. But this Thursday show might be the most electric Dolphins live you've ever seen. Mark your calendars. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss anything. All right, let's get into this because NFL power rankings have been released this morning. Let's get into where the Dolphins rank in the latest NFL power rankings. Chat Sports Power Rankings, your boy has a vote in that, which is probably why the Dolphins are ranked fourth in that, the highest in all the power rankings that I've seen. CBS ranking the Dolphins eight. That's ridiculous. USA Day and ESPN five and the NFL.com eight. Anyone who is ranking the Dolphins below five right now is a hater because there's five unbeaten teams left. The Dolphins are one of those five unbeaten teams, and they have very impressive wins. They had a convincing win over a Patriots team that made the playoffs last year in their first game. Second game, they go to Baltimore, come back from a 21-point deficit. This is a top-five team right now. Should be in the power rankings for sure. Where would you rank the Dolphins in your power rankings? Go down to the comments section. Let me know. For me, I put them at five. I wouldn't have them below five if I were a voting member, which I am. You check out Chat Sports Power Rankings.